Hi, my name is Jude Madelich Hall, and this is Titles, Talk, and Tipples. My guest today is Anna Rose, author of the Sumer Web, Tales of the Dragon Guard, and the Lucy series. Welcome, Anna. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jude. It's definitely a pleasure to be here. Oh, great. And um, what are we drinking today? We are drinking a, an Imperial Stout. It Honestly, is a ridiculous ABV on it, but I'm not going to tell you because I have to be responsible later. And um, yeah, they're very they're strong. <laughs> they can't see through thick, dark, sweet. Yeah. It has notes of chocolate and coffee in it, and mm. it's really tasty. And very I made tasty. a big breakfast to go underneath. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, salut. Salut. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, this is off the cuff. It's all spontaneous. We'll talk about your writing. We'll talk about my writing. We'll talk about writing in general. And mm -hmm. we'll even talk about non-writing <laughs> topics. There's something so, in writing? Uh, shocked. <laughs> you shocked. <laughs> so um, tell me a little bit about your writing career. Um, I have been writing in one degree or another since I was a little kid. Um, I wasn't much of a reader or writer when I was very young, and my parents sent me to a tutor who taught me how to read using phonics. Highly recommend phonics. If you can use them to teach kids, it's great. They don't use it in schools very much anymore, I don't believe. Um, and so I'd been writing. I, I filled reams of spiral notebooks with stories and what now is fan fiction and everything else. Thank God they've been lost because I'd be <laughs> horrified if I were to pick some of them up and see what's in there. Um, and then uh, finally, um, in uh, January of uh, 2012, I released uh, my first novel, Shifra, uh, which is the first, it's, it's a vampire novel as part of the Shamari Web series. Um, I, I got I, I wrote it because when I was looking for vampire fiction, all I was finding were vampire romances. Mm. Not much of a rom romance fan. I've got a couple that I that I like to you know I enjoy like Diana Gabaldon's Outlander series and stuff. Mm. Love that. Um, but everything I saw it was like the the vampire who you know squirreled away somewhere you know doing the whole monk vampire thing you know you needed that human. <laughs> Who would say yes. <laughs> and whatever, and usually he was human again or something close to human. And I wrote my my vampires, um, Shifra. She's a. Uh, I basically I timed it like just before vampires could have potentially entered some sort of the the the, the mythos of the time. So she's turned in the mid 1600s, uh, like 17 years old, accidental turn kind of a thing. And I believe that when you have characters, something like that, they have to have limitations. Yeah. Otherwise, you, otherwise you have something like a superhero. I mean, even, you know, Superman's got his kryptonite and, and the whole yeah. nine yards, you know, mag, you know, Wolverine has his Magneto, if you remember what happened with the, the clog. Yeah. <laughs> but, so my vampires have to drink from a living human. So none of this bottled blood thing, that kind of a thing. So I mean, oh, okay. I took a lot of my prejudices and I dealt with them within that. And that's supposed to be a four book series. So far, I've got three. Um, the fourth book is really being stubborn. It's partially <laughs> written, but it's been stubborn as hell. And it's oh, okay. it's annoying. I, I need to speak to that particular muse and we may talk after this. And yeah. <laughs> banging. It's one or the other of us hitting the wall. I don't know. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting so when we run into, that. you know, yeah. a story so becomes difficult. Yeah, so there's, there's those three stories. Um, then I've written some short stories. Um, and uh, like The Thing in the Closet is a short story. It's kind of the idea of what if the monster, into, once over the monster into the bed and the thing in the closet yeah. suddenly yeah. had to take care of a youngster. Yeah, I read that one. Yeah, I really liked it. I I actually wanted it to be longer. I wanted to keep reading. I wanted to know more. I, I, I've considered doing that for my Patreon page, actually. 
that. And then I had the Dragon Guard series as I've loved dragons since uh, I discovered Anne McCaffrey as a teenager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so that's two of three books written there so far. And then at this point, also the Lucy series. And it's just, it's been a progression and I like my writing and I like to have strong characters. I don't like having, you know, weak, flimsy type stuff. I like characters who can stand up for themselves. I like, you know, like my vampires like what they are, mm-hmm. you know, they're not looking to be saved, anything like that. You know, it's, it's, to me, it, 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 it seems dishonest. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. And I like to have honesty in my writing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, your readers uh, will know if you're not being honest. <laughs> they definitely know if you like uh, the stuff or not. I mean, I'm thinking about one one particular book series, uh, I won't name it, that ended. And it's like a character who hadn't been around for like three or four books suddenly shows up and the main character ends up marrying the guy. And it's oh. like, really? This makes no sense at all. Oh. So either, either the author got bored and so they did it themselves or a ghostwriter finished it for them who'd never touched the series and just <laughs> the characters were and maybe just said, just bring it to an end. It, 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 it seemed dishonest and um, was a real yeah. disappointment. And I can't, I, I can't do that. No. So, you know, it's like with you, what's, what, what's your writing? You know, what, what do you... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I I have love in my story, my novel that's coming out in um, the fall, uh, Mm -hmm. the Everstein Chronicles, Small Demons, but it's not the focal point. I mean, you know, a relationship does blossom. But um, when I deal with relationships, it's more about like friendship and compassion and sympathy. You know, those are strong uh, themes in my stories. And um, um, and mine are pretty whimsical, pr- dark, gothic, yeah. steampunk, uh, uh, right. satire, really. And I just got a message from Rowan. <laughs> so, Speaking of speak steampunk, yeah, I um, oh. I know with I uh, yeah with 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 mine, um, my my Lucy stories are about preconceptions and friendship and loss <laughs> and growth. And everything else, and I have demons in mind as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's just, and but it, it it's been a fun write. And in this oh, case, yeah. and in this case, it's not a romance because the devil are she are the, the devil for one is female, and she has a girlfriend already. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted I wanted to make sure the reader wasn't going to think, oh yeah, Hector and Lucy are going to together, yada yada yada. Yeah. You know, and, and there you know, and there's a potential for a relationship there within the story, within all of the characters. Um, but that is incidental to the story. It's not the goal of the story. Yes. Yeah, definitely. That's the same with mine. It's not the goal of the story. Yeah. Exactly. And that's kind of what I think that you've got, you know, it, it sounds like anyway, what you've got. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and, you know, I deal strongly with the relationship between a Buddhist monk and a demon. <laughs> so it's like these two, you know, just these two supposedly what we would think completely opposing creatures or beings. Um, on opposite sides, you know, one's supposedly evil, one's supposedly good, but I deal with a deep friendship between them, you know, and, and um, just love on many levels. And, and I think that's what sometimes lacks in a lot of writing or in a lot of people's brains. It's like, I'll, I'll be, um, I'll hear things like, um, there's a theory out there that in Lord of the Rings, Frodo and Sam were lovers. I'm like, why does, why do we have to do that with everything? A friendship can be a very loving, caring, amazingly strong thing. And it doesn't have to be a sexual relationship. Why do we have to make everything about sex? I I, I see Frodo and Sam as being as close as brothers. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a beautiful friendship and we can have beautiful relationships without. We, We have those people for whom we would quite literally do anything. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that is, and I think were, were the situation reversed, I believe Frodo would do the same for Sam. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Just, you, you know, know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, no, I, I don't see, I don't see a need to, to put a sexual aspect to everything. Yeah. Um, it's not necessary. I mean, and you talk about, you know, the whole idea of polar opposites, my man, in the Lucy book, the first one, 
Um, Hector Rhodes, hence the title is, or his is R-H-O-A-D-E-S, so oh, I guess right. I don't play with his name for the title. Um, he is, um, you know, he, his, he, he's a professor of comparative religion at, uh, at UCLA, because I'm in LA, so it made sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so of course he goes to, you know, he has his own issues of why he's doing what he's doing, and he's, he's been living very dangerously for a while, and he figures out who she is, and so he goes to meet her. And he is completely blown away that she isn't his conception of what he thought things were. So she already goes and throws everything on, on its ass. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I, I like taking things and shaking things up a little bit. Yeah, I, I think that's our job. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I think we could probably make more money and sell more books if we really focused hard on giving the majority of people what they want. I'm not about that. No. <laughs> That's mainstream. To you, to you, my <laughs> sister behind the pen. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, shake things up. I like to, you know, I, I have a lot of humor in mine. And uh, what I think is, what I think is funny. I don't know if anybody else is going to find it funny, but it's definitely satire. And, if, you've read uh, any of, if you've read any of the first Lucy book, you'll definitely see some stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, there <laughs> definitely was. <laughs> yeah. God, is it real? uh i'm going to give you since we're talking about your books thought i'd give you a quiz about Uh your own writing so so this is fear (laughs) we don't have to do it if you don't want to (laughs) so you know i i you know i can i can be potentially embarrassed as much as anybody else (laughs) well you know it's really interesting because i feel like there's no winning or losing with this. It's just for it's fun. Totally right book. Yeah. And w- the way I came up with it was uh, a couple uh, guests ago, I was reading their stuff and I just loved their imagery. It was Sean Cosby's imagery. Oh, just, yeah. I just, yeah. I've been reading his, um, pardon me, the audio book. Um, I'm on one of the, the sites. I, I got the audio book of his latest one. Oh, yeah. razor blade tears. Yeah, I'm really, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. He lot. is so good, and I just, I fell in love with his imagery. So I was like, I'm going to give you a test on your imagery to see if you can place what book this came out of. And so, and we had so much fun with that that he was like, I'll be interested to see how other writers do. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess Uh-oh, this is I not. <laughs> I'm going to have to do this with every everybody now, <laughs> which is yeah. great. It's a it's a lot of fun. Me, you know, because I get to really delve into everything that you've done and so Mm -hmm. i'm gonna put this up here so i can read it (laughs) by the way they're very lovely i'm sorry what was that tattoos they're lovely oh thank you yes this is actually cover up believe it or not yeah that is looks like it was potentially very painful no my arms weren't at all yeah (laughs) <laughs> the woman I am. I have a I have a couple of my calves that my mom recently discovered. Just, boy, was I in trouble! Doesn't matter how old you get. Doesn't matter if you're in your fifties. Your mom is still going to give you a raft when you get a tattoo. <laughs> About which she does not approve. Mom. Yeah. To moms. <laughs> I told her about the interview. She said, "I get." To, she said, "I'm going to see it, right?" Yes, mom. You'll see it. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's interested. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's always nice when a parent, no matter how old you are, when a parent enjoys what you do, it's very nice. She told me after I published Shefer, I always knew you'd be a writer. Why didn't you tell me that before, Mom? I would have started her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that too. <laughs> yeah, your mom does that. Well, my mom was. Uh, she was just concerned that you know I never make a living off of it so it wasn't really supported you know because it was like no you need to get real skills and do and work for real you know so i actually Uh, dropped it for a long time but my mom told me she was worried i was going to write my version of mommy dearest i said no mommy (laughs) 
<laughs> well, isn't that funny? Like the, the, and that's funny too. That's a different aspect of not supporting someone because they're afraid you're going to reveal what they were like raising you. <laughs> I've actually, I have, I have been challenged to write a book about my ex-husband's family. They said no one would believe it was real because it would be <laughs> like humor. Uh, it, this stuff you just say, I just can't make this shit up. Wow. It, yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Oh my God. So yeah, I, I, I've debated it. I mean, I, 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 I jettisoned him, you know, more than 25 years ago, but it's kind of like, I've thought about it and his mother is still alive and she's still as unpleasant as she was. <laughs> she's a perfect target for satire. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, that's um, where we get our characters, right? We base them on people, we, well, things we've experienced, people we've experienced. Now tell the truth. Have you ever um, included somebody in one of your books that ended up dead. <laughs> because it is that much. Can you realize every time, every time somebody reads that story, they die all over again. Right. Yeah. I mean, when I realized that's that, when a... it, yeah, and it, that's cathartic as hell. Every time someone reads <laughs> that, they die all over again. And my heart went, right. oh, okay, oh. lady, I'm writing you right here. <laughs> I'm killing you. <laughs> uh, oh, she's, yeah, she was terrible. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. That's what this show is about. It's just about having fun. <laughs> good. Well, so far, I'm having a blast. So oh, good. I'm that. glad. <laughs> All right. So I'm not going to tell you what book it's from. I'm, it's okay. just a line from your book, one of your books or stories. It could be from a short okay. story, too. Okay. That's fine. So, just whatever I could get my hands on, basically. <laughs> I found six. I usually do around six. Okay. So, um, yeah, I won't cover all of your stuff, but hopefully mm. I did a good, right, wide I'll, range. I'll hope real hard <laughs> that my brain will engage. <laughs> okay. High ideals and all that are supposed to make us better people. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. High ideals and all that are supposed to make us better people. In practice, however, such nobility often finds itself being quietly swept under the rug. Sounds like Shifra. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's spelled S-I-O-F-R-A. S-R-A. It Shifra. is uh, it is Irish Gaelic for elf. Oh, okay. You know, I usually try to look that kind of stuff up, but I, I run out of time. And so I did oh, not really? know. <laughs> yeah, what is that? Yeah, I would have I would have pronounced it Siafra, but I'm that's glad, okay. I'm glad that's you why every, that's why everything else has normal names. You know, that, <laughs> that, that story is like we got Chifra, Fiacfola, Drockfola. There's a short story, Fiastafola, which tells the story about when a vampire goes to have dinner in Nazi Germany. <laughs> um, <laughs> I liked that little evil giggle you just gave. <laughs> Next is, they seemed so very graceful as they made their way through the air. They dipped and soared, wingtip to wingtip, in a wondrous aerial ballet. I as dragon. When yes. the first, looking at them uh, as they were flying by, she's wistfully wishing. Yes, that was a really beautiful image. I loved that that chapter. It was very nice. And, you know, I was like, the moment I knew as soon as I talked about flying that you would know it was the dragons. You know, I'm like, I don't know. I can't, no. I couldn't find a line that was really obscure, but that's okay. Meanwhile, yeah, have you ever read, um, have you read the, the Dragon Riders Prince series? I haven't. You haven't? Oh, my God. If you like dragons, I highly recommend it. <laughs> it's a first novel. Keep in mind, McCaffrey started out as a romance novelist. So there's some stuff in there. And you oh, want to talk okay. about remembering your stuff. The frustrating bit is when you see when she forgot what she put in a, an earlier book and you see her contradict herself later. Oh, yeah. You and know, I, but... I, I loved her writing, but it was said those, you know, writer brain. Right. You know, yeah, you know, exactly. You know, you grab something. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, if you have a really elaborate world, oh boy, you know, it's, um, uh, I, uh, there's actually, I'm, pro I'm pretty positive. I'm probably going to end up contradicting myself one way or another. Cause I write a fan. I've created a fantasy world. It's, it's earth. And then it's, and another, and uh, the, uh, the flip side is unreality. 
Yeah, well, and, with me writing hell, so I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so, right, when we dabble in make-believe worlds, it's, you know, it's uh, eventually we'll probably trip up. We just hope that but that's what a series Bible is for. If you, I'm assuming you keep a series, a book or a series Bible. I have um, pieces of paper everywhere. <laughs> um, I, I rely on the computer and at least two cloud services because I've heard of enough people losing work that it's like, no, 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 oh, no, no. Yeah. Take this and be anal as hell and <laughs> put it yes. in multiple number of places mm -hmm. because I, I've lost stuff before and I never want to do that again. Yes. As a writer, Losing stuff scares the hell out of me. Oh, you know, you know, I just lost, mm -hmm. I just lost the beginning of a manuscript that I started um, after I finished my first novel. I was going to delve right into the second novel, but then my my publisher talked me into doing something else, something bigger, an epic mm -hmm. fantasy. So I had started the second book, and I lost. I thought I lost everything, mm -hmm. and that was the weird thing was everything else I have. It's on the cloud, it's on my computer, it's on a thumb drive, and it's probably on a second thumb drive. So usually I have three to four copies of mm -hmm. stuff saved. I couldn't find this anywhere. And I was like, and my computer had crashed um, oh. several months ago. So I was like, well, my gosh, was, was the computer the only place I had it saved? I ended up finding it on a, oh, a thumb drive of pictures. So I had actually grabbed the wrong oh, thumb the drive. The goddess of writers was looking at for you so bad. Yes. So are yes. You, are you uploading stuff to the cloud at this point then? Yeah. That, and that's the funny thing was that was the only thing that was not uploaded to the cloud. So now it is. <laughs> and it's on my you computer. Know, when I write, I say things incrementally. So it's kind of like, you know, Lucy Roads to Recovery 1, Roads to Recovery 2, 3, 4, mm. 5. So that way... I always have something and I know where it was. Oh. Plus, I think ultimately, if God forbid you ever had to prove it was yours, you oh, could yeah. say, okay, this is the history right here. I save incrementally. So that way, and like if I end up cutting something out, like I can find it if I want to. That way, no one, nothing's truly lost. That's good. Yeah. And so I do that. I mean, I recommend that for any writer just because that way you can also take a look. One, you can see usually where you started it, wherever, you know, iteration one is mm -hmm. and go on from there. And I think it's useful. It helps to keep you from losing um, work that you may decide you want to use somewhere else. I mean, I'm sure that oh, you yeah. had things that you write this, you know, maybe not here, but maybe I can use it somewhere else. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't throw anything away. If and with no. Patreon, apparently, you know, you've got a little bit of income coming in. If you're anything like me, you got rent to pay, credit oh, card. Oh, gosh, rent. yeah. Who doesn't? Right. <laughs> An overpriced beer to buy. Whatever. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You know, the thing is, you know, 10.9% ABC. Oh, yeah, those micro brews. Yeah, they're going to be spendy. They're going to be high alcohol content. But they're, yeah, which is why like they burn better. <laughs> I think yeah, I call it. <laughs> what is the whole thing? I mean, when you, when you do the beers, you, you, you don't have these at, at refrigerator temperature because the flavor is not right and it's too cold. So you let it get closer to temperature and the flavor blooms and you have more of an idea of what's in there. Yeah. So for me, this is a good thing to sit back and write because it allows me to relax, mm -hmm. just kind of get into the groove, and that works for me. Yeah, I, I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I, 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 oh, that's okay. It's, uh, I think we have a very slight delay, just so you know. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But I enjoy um, sipping when I'm writing. I, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't hate to admit it, but you know, I'd love to get the if I could get to that place um, of just like, I, I kind of write experimentally um, sometimes not, I'm not really out there experimental, but I do kind of delve in a little bit of experimental space when I'm writing. And um, when I need just that flow of thought and that kind of almost chaotic, like weird um thought process but i want it to come out in my writing i like to i like to drink alcohol when i'm writing i don't i, uh, I think i don't get drunk that, but no well, it's <laughs> that whole you know uh gaelic fire in the head thing you know, <laughs> but that's what it is i mean in your drinking you get the fire in the head and you become you that the, the writing the creativity yeah. is, is is spurred on mm-hmm 
a really good friend of mine who is an author and musician and artist, and I'm so jealous as her being a Renaissance type woman, uh, had a song she sang with a group called Bridget's Fire. It was called Fire in the Head, and it was a, a really, really cool really nice. real thing. Yeah. But yeah, it's, you know, um, and I recognize some people out there for whatever reason, don't drink, they don't choose to, or there's an That's issue. All, yeah. I don't have any problem with people not drinking. <laughs> you know, it's like all of our. It sounds terrible more for me, but um, no, but I mean, you know, it's like whatever, I mean, ultimately whatever helps you, whether it's sitting down with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, mm-hmm. or drinking, you know, beer, yeah. you may yeah. like, like a nice tall glass of milk, whatever it is that helps you with your creativity. That's fine. As mm-hmm. long as you're responsible. Absolutely. That's why I'm doing this when I am, so that when the time comes that I have to go see my mom in a little while. <laughs> right, right. Things are worn down a bit. <laughs>